I had an opportunity to go watch Oppenheimer and I watched it in the IMAX theater uh, where Christopher Nolan watches and screens his movies, him and Emma, his wife, and I even asked, let me sit where Chris is sitting. So they said, Chris sits here to enjoy the movie. So I sat where Chris sat. I watched Oppenheimer, it was amazing. And I was thinking, holy shit. This thing, red one on this screen, uh, with this technology, it's gonna be game over. <laughs> man this guy sucks well it happened i can't believe that i actually got swindled into watching this movie don't worry mates i didn't take this movie seriously the studio didn't take this movie seriously somebody might have taken this movie seriously not mentioning names but that doesn't mean that you should as everyone knows or i guess for those people that are not the chronically online types Red One is a holiday streaming movie turned theatrical release because of, well, you heard the man at the beginning of the video. And don't get me wrong, it's obviously such a great time to just sit back and laugh at this bloke, but in some subconscious way, I'm sure I also envy and aspire to have such a small fragment of the delusional confidence Dwayne The Rock Johnson displays on a day-to-day -day basis. You gotta just respect it. And while the streaming movie turned theatrical release has been such a reliable and honestly thriving strategy in our current Hollywood climate, I'm sure it not only came to quite a surprise for Dwayne the Bloke Johnson and the studio, but for us the audience that the level of quality this movie had to offer pretty much just equaled out to a Christmas sized shit on a screen. But again, as with most pieces in entertainment nowadays, either on the big or the small screen, that didn't necessarily have to be the case. On paper, and even in some scenes in the movie itself, Red One was an idea that definitely had a semblance of a foundation of what a holiday movie could really hope to deliver mildly likable characters, and absolutely stunning practical effects, which I wish I could shed more of a light on because the practical effects in this movie were genuinely the best Red One had to offer, and an aspect that the team behind this movie could really hang their hat on. But underneath a surface as thin as a 7-Eleven scratch-off, Red One was a movie that, unfortunately, fell victim to their own hubris, outlandish goals, and lack of direction, hiding behind a star-studded cast that I'm sure just ended up costing the entire budget of most blockbuster movies themselves, and because of that, Red One was just an absolute mess to watch. A movie that didn't really know what type of tone it was going for and would consistently stay on, pacing in a runtime so jarring that it leaves you thinking that the bloke himself was in charge of post-production, laughable and, in most cases, predictable character writing with characters just playing themselves with probably the most forgettable and Toontown level villain that we the audience have been so blessed to forget in the last half decade of media itself, and the worst part of it all, a virtually non-existent feeling, vibe, or atmosphere of the Christmas spirit. And while we are in no doubt a society where the feeling, vibe, and atmosphere of the Christmas spirit has diminished pretty dramatically in just my lifetime, unfortunately, realism is not what I, and I imagine most of the audience, is looking for when it comes to their feel-good holiday movie. Eh, what are you gonna do? Let's just go ahead and talk. All right, let's just go ahead and keep this short, simple, and to the point. What's unfortunate is that while I say that, I'm more than likely just going to end up writing a better plot synopsis than this movie could ever hope to write for itself, but again, what are you gonna do? Red One follows J.K. Santa and Dwayne the Bloke Johnson on the day before Christmas Eve, a Christmas that Dwayne the Bloke Johnson confirms to be his last ride as he no longer sees the Christmas spirit within the populace in order to carry on his Christmas mission. But in a shocking turn of events, J.K. Santa is kidnapped from the North Pole by the Witch of Winter, an evil witch with a villain trope of punishing the naughty in the name of the nice. With the state of Christmas in limbo, 24 hours and in a race against time, Dwayne the Bloke Johnson finds himself teaming up with deadbeat dad Captain Christmas as the two team up and location hop in order to find Santa, take out the Winter Witch, save Christmas, and maybe make a couple friends and learn a lesson or two along the way. Listen, over this year alone, I have gone out of my way to see many disappointing turds on a screen like Megalopolis and Civil War. And even worse, there have been moments where I myself have taken my valuable time and brain cells to the dump by watching Atlas and Rebel Moon Part 2 in the comfort of my own home. These are the decisions that the present grader that you are currently listening to genuinely regrets 
And while those are decisions, time, and brain cells that I will never get back, for a movie that basically built their own house in the same neighborhood as all of those blatantly mismanaged and overpriced flops on a screen in this 2024 Hollywood filler art, I think a bigger issue is really at play when you take a step back and look at the grander scale of the Hollywood landscape and realize that Christmas movies are dead. And in reality, have been dead for quite a long time. The holiday movie subgenre has always been pretty niche to begin with, but universal, or I guess I should say national holiday movies such as Halloween, Christmas, or Valentine's Day, will always be a staple within the Hollywood landscape and audiences that they're intended towards. And while holidays such as Valentine's Day or Halloween will continue to have their fair share of recent hits due to the umbrella genre that they find themselves under with the rom-coms and horror genre, the Christmas subgenre doesn't have that safety net to fall back on. Meaning that the level of care, grace, and heart from the studios, actors, and behind the scenes team has to go into the making of a Christmas film. And I just don't think Hollywood has that spark, charm, self-awareness, and creative touch to meet such a demand that a Christmas movie truly deserves. And I'm not sure if that's even an aspect of our society that is so easily regained. And while the movie itself attempted to point out in the most on the nose and elementary way possible, it just goes back to the lack of self-awareness that has been running rampant throughout our Hollywood studios like a virus to the point where Red One ended up becoming the very movie it swore to protect us from. The point is, is that Red One is just a glorified buddy cop movie that embarrassingly is trying its best to masquerade as a Christmas movie that can't find its own head from its own ass. Blowing up the head of an actor that doesn't really need it seeing how he was strongmanning his way into a Toontown theatrical release, even though admittedly Dwayne the Bloke Johnson's box office resume is pretty stacked, so I'll give him credit on that. Filled with a bunch of actors that, like I said, more than likely cost about the same amount as your average Christopher Nolan movie, that ultimately fails to deliver on really any movie-making aspects that the audience could grasp onto when it comes to the quality, heartfelt, and memorable holiday movie. Truly hammering home the fact that Hollywood has lost the plot when it comes to the Christmas spirit. Go watch Narnia, The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe. That's my Christmas movie. So in a ranking tier list that is still a name in progress, I'm sure it comes to nobody's surprise. Well, maybe one. That Red One is a Toontown ass movie, and a movie that I genuinely believe won't even be remembered by the time that the holiday that it's representing comes around. And that is a feat that deserves slander all within itself. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll leave a link to my Twitter and letterbox in the description just in case you want to go check that out. Again, I want to thank you for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that is all the words I got for you today. Bye.